Hi, this is a tutorial for creating a downloadable package that participants or users can run via Pebble. Um, I have a blog post companion to this. This is the draft that will get completed when I finish this, so we'll be following along. A lot of the details are going to be here, including maybe links to files and things like that. So the basic um, problem that I'm trying to address here is let's say that you are running an experiment in Pebble, but you need to have people run this on their own computers at home. So um, what we have, um, what I'm showing you now is how um, expects the users to all be running a relatively modern version of Windows. So I think you could make this work for Mac OS, but um, the process would be a little different. And so we can expect most people have access to a Windows computer. It won't run on a tablet unless it's a Surface tablet. It won't run on a phone. This is for a desktop or laptop computer. Um, <clears throat> this is a first in a series of tutorials. But the later ones will show you how to have the software automatically upload its data to a website that you could have access to or a server you could host. Um, but this expects that um, the users will download a zip director, zip folder. They'll unzip it, they'll follow your instructions to click on a file that will run a series of tests. And then um, their data from those tests will be saved to a file. They're going to have to uh, somehow get that data back to you via email or something. So um, the first thing to do is to actually download uh, download the standalone Pebble fold, um, that you're going to use. So what I'm going to show you will only work for version 2.1.4 for the portable version of Pebble. So not the one that you installed, but only the portable version. Um, and Technically, you could make this work for the installed, but then the user would have to install it and do a bunch of other stuff. The idea here is that they can download this, um, save it on their desktop, extract it on their desktop, navigate there and click a button and run it without having to install it, without needing um, any uh, access to installing it. So you need to work within this Pebble portable. So if you go to the Pebble website, um, at pebble.sourceforge.net. Um, you can go to the project page. So let me show you. Here's the main uh, website. Go to the SourceForge project site. Go to Files, Pebble 2.1, and download 2.1.4. Um, so that will create, that will download to your download directory that you can then move to somewhere like your desktop, the zip folder. Um, I'm going to extract this uh, onto my desktop, and it'll take a couple minutes. Because, um, there's a couple thousand files, um, but uh, it'll take a little while. I think there's probably some scanning that's going on for me, to, but. Um, and it's actually going to appear right here when it's done. I'm going to move this over here so we can see it better. So um, this is going to be the folder that you create what you want, and then you eventually rename it, um, rezip it, and send it to your users. So it doesn't have to be on your desktop. It can really be anywhere, but put it somewhere convenient. Um, and actually, it creates sort of double, triple nested um, set of folders. You can go, in this case, all the way to um, Pebble 2.1.4, uh, drag it out. This is now, you can delete this. And you can work directly from here. So normally, this is one way to run Pebble on a computer that you don't have the ability to install. 
or it's just inconvenient to, to install on. You run it here and you hit the run pebble.bat. Now sometimes depending on when you download it, there's um, like there's a Windows Defender which says, are you sure you want to run this? And you have to assert that you really do want to run it. Um, <clears throat> what I'm going to show you is really um, some tricks that are only accessible to donors. If You need this password in order to use it. Um, for, for normal use of Pebble, you don't need the password. I'm going to, but um, for doing this, um, the function of creating a custom launcher requires you to have a password. So I'm going to um, enter it here. Just a second. Um, and really, the only thing <coughs> that that um, is needed for is to do this custom launcher. Um, so if you don't, if you want the password, go to uh, once you open this up, you can go to I think under help, donate. You can donate money via Superior Ideas. You could contribute in other ways, like provide a translation for a test, provide bug fixes, um, provide normed data sets. So or just ask me really nicely, and I'm and um, and uh, this is just a way to help um, fund the development of Pebble, but you really don't need um, to donate to actually use any of the individual tests. So this is the launcher now. Um, and if I close it and run it again from this run pebble, it should load directly. So um, <clears throat> the next thing you need to do is figure out what tests you want to use. And, and this is probably where your starting point was. You found some tests that you, from pebble that you want to use. And um, most of them are within this battery folder. And I'm going to go to, just for convenience sake, clock test. So this is a vigilance task. but um, And if I run it, it makes a clock with a little light that goes around once every second. But sometimes it skips a place, and you have to hit a button. Um, now. Um, for whatever test or tests you want to run, there's probably customization you want to do. First of all, there's um, there's instructions, and and whether or not um, you are giving this test in English, you can translate it either to your own language. Um, you you would hit uh, change the language here, or if you use English and hit translate test here, um, it would um, allow you to change the text. Actually, um, that doesn't work on the custom launcher, so you'd have to do it on the installation. Uh, there's some bug that I haven't fixed yet um, to do that, but there might be specific instructions that you could change. Uh, it's actually really easy to change if you go to the, navigate to the folder and you have to edit this JSON file. And for almost everything we're going to do, I'm going to have you edit things with Notepad++. So go ahead and download that and install that so you can use it. So if I have different instructions here, um, I can change them in this by editing this file. Um, maybe you, you want to have more specific instructions for users who are going to be doing this online. OK, um, the other thing that um, you might want to do is change the parameter settings. So I'm going, and you want to do this first before you do anything else. You want to get the individual test down to what, what you want. I'm going to select clock test, hit edit, change the parameter settings. And here it's, um, it originally was 60, but I'm going to change it to 15 so that we only have a 15 second trial to look at. Um, you can see this has changed to clock test. If I run instead of default, and if I run this, Here's the test. Um, and I'm hitting a button every time it skips a dot. And it should go on for 15 of these. OK. This 
is the basic results. Now, it has saved this in um, within here in this data folder, according to the subject code. It has two files, one which is the actual, that report that was just at the end, time and trials and things like that. But also there's a trial by trial um, record in a CSV. response time and all the details of the test and almost every pebble test has um, a data file and most of them are, most of them have a report file that does some summarization you're gonna have to figure out for each test you have what these files are going to be what they're going to be called and they're always going to be within the battery the test and within data so that you can tell your participants um, to how to find these and how to send them back to you Okay, so now I have a cust I've customized this maybe by changing the instructions and changing the parameters. So the next thing I want to do is um, make um, a experiment chain. And I can select tasks here and add it, either append or insert, which puts it before the cursor, to an, a chain of experiments. But you want to make sure you select the right the parameter settings you you have so um, that that added the default one this will add the custom one and if you click on here you can see it's using this one's using the clock test parameter set this one's using the default so i want to delete this it's selected so i can hit uh, Delete step, and I'll save this. Now, if you're running an online experiment, um, sometimes you want additional instructions of some sort. Maybe you have um, an informed consent statement. So um, you can add instructions, filler tasks, whatever, uh, <clears throat> by, um, by changing this by adding a new task. And within this download, I have this uh, informed consent.pebble, which is a very simple instruction task. And all this will do, um, it does, has a possibility of a couple different types of instructions. Here's text I can put in, and maybe you have informed consent that was um, approved by your IRB and you could put text here. You might need that in a couple different windows, um, so you can have OK, OK, OK. Um, you might have more detailed instructions that you want to have as an image. So um, just as a simple way, I, I have a way of you can make a an image, a screenshot of a maybe a PowerPoint slide, and use that instead of text. You can't mix text and, and the image, so you have to put all the text in the image. Um, you could also, maybe you have an online version this or part of this that you want people to go to a Google um, or SurveyMonkey survey and um, complete a set of surveys, you can add a link that you follow to go to that survey using the launch file function. Um, and you can add, you know, as many of these message boxes as you want, just with different text in it. So <clears throat> this would be um, this experiment would involve maybe this clock test plus this informed consent. We can test the informed consent. You can see here's an image. Here is, um, it actually, the next thing sent me to this web, sent me to the Pebble website. And then I've got the all work and no play text. And um, if you agree to this, hit okay to continue. Otherwise close windows and do not continue. So you can okay. So this would be a way of inserting sort of instructions. If you have multiple filler instructions, you could have multiple versions of this that you add to the chain. So let's add a let's add a copy of this to the beginning of the chain. And just to show how you could do it, you could add it to the end of the chain as well. So first I'm going to do the instructions, then I'm going to do the clock test. Then I'm going to do actually the same instructions again. And I could run another test. This is a this just gives me information about the 
version of Pebble. And so I'll add that to the chain too. Okay, so once you're satisfied, you have all of the um, parameter settings and the text instructions and you've made your chain, you can save this. And um, so that's step one. So you should try this chain to make sure it works. So let's try this chain. We can launch the chain. We get our informed consent. Now we get our clock test. And this should be the 15 second version. Let's see. All right. And then I get the um, instructions again, then I get the version. Okay, so it ran through all of those. All right, so that's just testing the chain you want to run. Now, the next step is to um, the next step is to create a custom launcher based on this chain. Um, now that we've tested it, so again, everything we've done so far is available to anyone, but this custom launcher is only available if you have. Um, the password, which I give out to donors. So I'm going to create custom launcher. And it says, launcher for default config created in documents. Okay. I could have renamed this whatever I wanted. I could have multiple chains that I create for different versions of the experiment. Maybe I have different things counterbalanced. And so half the people get one and half the people get the other. So you can create multiple chains. But I'm going to close this and go back to my Pebble 2.14 folder and you can see that there is launch default dot config dot bat this can be renamed to whatever you want as long as it has a dot bat at the end run so i'm just going to call it run experiment because this is what your users your subjects will have to click on in order to run the test so you're going to run this and this <coughs> um, is the launcher window um, in, in your, um, instructions for this, you're going to have to figure out how they specify themselves via some type of participant code. And this, um, this is how you do it. Um, so maybe you give each one, each person an anonymous code that can link all their data together. So it actually has some, um, automatic tracker <coughs> to um, increment every time it's used. But if you give this to multiple people, you're gonna have you know, everyone use five or something. So you wanna have a way of, of specifying a specific code that you give people. In a later tutorial, I'll show you how to do this by downloading a unique code from a server website. But we'll just end up using five. So <coughs> now you can see that same chain appears here on the second page. Um, and all they need to do is hit the start button and it will run through all of them. So we go here and we get this initial instructions. It opened up a web page on my other screen. Now it does the clock test. Um, and here you can see, because I already used five once, it's going to be asking, should I choose new code or add session? You shouldn't have a problem with this if you use unique subject codes every time. But we'll go through the 15 second test. Uh, all right. Targets, correct responses, two false alarms, mean RT, hit exit to continue. Now it takes me to the next. The, you know, the, this would be like a debriefing instruction and then a final um, instruction. I hit done and it's over. Now, so this is basically what your participant will see. Um, that custom, uh, the custom launch file is customizable in a number of ways. Um, so, Let's, if you want to change anything in there, you can go to this, to Pebble, 
pebble lib and open custom launcher.pebble using word notepad plus plus and this first function in here this is all public code this first function in here called branding includes a lot of the things here um, including what the background should be so you could get rid of that background by giving it a different <coughs> image um, but you might not want it to say um, have this pebble project you say you can say you know I'm at Michigan Technological University Psychology Lab um, and you don't have to you can change these to personality experiment launcher we can get rid of stuff like this you can change colors um, I can make this main window this main button orange it understands a lot of different colors names and you could tweak different font sizes and things like that so let me see what happens hopefully this will work I go back here and try running the experiment again so now Let's change some of the colors. I'll change this to participant six. Everything is orange. Um, now you see personality experiment launcher, Michigan Tech University Psych Lab. I could <coughs> change the background to some other image if you wanted. You just have to save that image within that. Um, you save that image within that folder, Pebble, Pebble Lib. You save an image in here. Um, and we'll use that one instead. Okay, so um, so that would be how you customize that particular um, launcher to be to make it look like exactly how you want it. One thing that you might consider is on line uh, sixty five, there's modes. Um, you could change this to, I'm not sure what this does, but let's, <clears throat> let's do uninterrupted state zero. This will let, um, this will make this launcher instead of, um, it'll let people click through this and, um, the sequence however they want. Um, this is probably not what you want, but um, once they run the first part, it'll take them back here and then they have to hit next and it'll run the next one and so on. Let me try to close this before we get to the end. So this is something you, these are some of the things you could play with. Um, I'm going to set that back to one and I think maybe subject mode is another option you can try. But that probably doesn't really do much. Um, okay. So you've customized your launcher now and uh, so um, now you're almost ready to create something that your users could download and use. Um, but what you might want to do ne next is clean up this whole um, folder and directory to make it simpler and easier to navigate. So First thing I'm going to do is rename this from Pebble 2 of 1 4. I'm going to name it Experiment. This is what your users are going to see. And there's a lot of stuff in here that you don't need. So this PNG, this informed consent should be in here. You actually could have put these in another location here, like you could have put it in battery to clean this up a little bit. I'm going to get rid of 
Um, actually, all of these things I'm going to I'm using, except this. So you can just clean this up. You don't. You won't need anything in the tutorials unless you happen to be running one of the tutorials from this, and you probably don't. Won't be. You should save. And then for battery, I've I'm only using the clock test. So let's select everything and unselect clock test, and I can delete that. Um, so this will delete a lot of files, a lot of this, the space, but it will also then make it a lot easier for your subjects to find the data that they're looking for. So when they're done, you, you're you going to tell them, go to battery, clock test, data, go to your subject code and give me the file that's in there and email it to me or something like that. So deleting all of those from the battery is going to be helpful. And then deleting like everything in demo and everything in tutorials, they don't need that, so that will save space. Now, on its own, this whole thing is about 45 to 50 megabytes when it's um, zipped. If that's too much, uh, you know, um, most people can, can, should be able to have it, handle that. But if that's too much, you can also go here to media and delete some of the sound files and image files, and especially fonts. So, for example, um, we sort by size. There's a lot of different fonts. <coughs> um, most of them are never used by any of the standard tests, so you could get rid of them. In fact, most of the biggest ones. Don't get any rid of any of the deja vu fonts because those are the standard fonts. And um, but the Firefly and Zen High are used for uh, non-Latin fonts like Asian fonts, and they're so they're very large, and you could easily compress out. You know, there's 27 megabytes of the file and those in of the file in those two files. So unless you're using um, something targeted to an Asian font, you these get used. If, if not, these don't get used. So you can delete those. And then, um, so we've sort of cleaned this all up. All right, so now um, we'll look at what this looks like. What's going to happen is your participants are going to download a zip file with this folder, and they'll see this. And so you should, um, the last thing you can do is get rid of the run pebble bat, which um, is what we used to create this, because you don't need that anymore. Um, you should have made a copy of the original one anyway um, when you're making this. If you you know if you really need to edit the the um, experiment chain or something, I'm going to get rid of this. So there's only one bat file to run here. You might also get rid of this temp bat that gets created by the launcher to run things. Um, and there you should be good to go. The um, so the next step is to take this folder and make it a zip file. And I have 7-zip um, installed, but I think Windows will also send to um, compressed folder. So you can go to send to compressed folder, and it makes a zip file. And now, let's see how big this is. So this is only 12 megabytes, and it's, um, in, you know, by removing those font files, we got rid of almost all of, all of the um, size of this archive. And this should be very easy to do. Now, um, this is <coughs> the file that you distribute to your users, along with instructions. Um, you can make, you know, I think WinZip and some other um, packages make self uh, what are they called? Self-extracting um, zip files. So you could have the experiment.exe. Those might be blocked by virus checkers though too. Um, so it's always a trade-off. Um, there might be ways, I think I've tr done this before, had um, some way of taking a zip file and running a self-extracting file and then um, executing a batch file, a specified batch file, all, all is one. Um, you should 
I'm, I don't really know how to do that though, but um, this is what you're going to distribute to your users, along with instructions. So there's some instructions you should consider. Um, first, the instructions of, of how to download and unzip this. So when they download this, this is gonna appear in um, their downloads folder. They actually probably might be able to run this from their downloads folder, but you might wanna tell them what you should do is extract this. Um, so we're going to, I'm actually gonna rename this. And the instructions would be something like, you download this to your desktop, right click and hit extract all. And so it's going to extract. This time it was a lot faster because there wasn't as many folders. Um, and the, the one thing you have to worry about is if I don't extract all, this was the this is the new one. Um, sometimes you can you can if you double click on this, you can navigate here, and it looks a lot of people don't recognize that this is just navigating the zip file. So I'm not, I don't think this will work. If I run this, then it'll say, well, extract all or run, and it might only extract this file. I don't think it's gonna work if I do this. And so, um, you know, someone might think that this is the way to do it. They'll double click on here and they'll hit run and it won't work. And then they'll say, it's not working. And so, for, for, so, so Windows is being too helpful here. Um, and what you really want to make sure they do is extract this to a folder, open this up, double click the run experiment, and then <coughs> enter their participant code. This doesn't even have to be a number. And then hit start and it'll take them through the whole task. You may, um, You, your instructions might include a video, just like I'm doing here. Um, definitely codes for um, what they should enter, how they can find and send the data back, who to contact for help, links to other online surveys you might wanna take if you don't wanna run it through one of these. Um, I should note that you can, um, when this gets run by the launcher, that it will, that, that subject code it uses will be available in here from default G subnum for, um, uh, value we can do just to show that I'm gonna add this to that text. And if I run this again, you can see that when I run this, see that I can access it from within this file, so I could um, actually add it to the UR a URL that I send things to, um, or other data I save for these other files. So you could use it within um, instructions or informed consent as well. So, you know, you might have a survey file where you want to pass a participant code on with it, and you could add that with the right um, arguments to this um, URL. So it would launch with the right uh, participant code. All right, so that, <clears throat> that is it for um, this tutorial on how to create a downloadable launcher that can be used by um, users to run a Pebble test on their own computer, but without installing in a fairly straightforward way. Um, and um, pay, stay tuned for additional tutorials where I show you how to um, use this in other ways, including um, having, the, <coughs> having the script upload its data to a um, data archive automatically at the end of the test. Thank you.